This is the cost. And then the government was to put in a percentage of that cost called the differentiated unit cost, mm -hmm. a certain percentage. What was it about? supposed to be? Some 80-something percent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the student or household to cover the rest. Yes. But the student also applies for a loan, a student loan. And for many cases, the student loan was able to cover that balance. The problem came when the government was not able to meet its commitment and obligations in the differentiated unit cost. So universities started running broke. They became bankrupt. Now universities now stopped being a going concern and they just became things. Enter this new conversation. How can we rescue this? Can we have a different way of funding the universities? Okay, we can have it in the three tiers. One, government through scholarship. This is taxpayer funded university. And then the second one is loan through the higher education loans board. And then the third one is household where you pay. The university scholarship is then categorized into bands, and that's what Mushmo Beatrice Elachi was talking about. And these bands are where each student is then weighted depending on their capacity to raise money. Those that are deemed to be able are given less scholarship than those that are deemed to be unable. The problem has come with the number one, the categorization, the method used to categorize the students. It's called the means testing instrument. Mm -hmm. And the communication that has come in throughout. And I think, uh, Bridget, and I'll come to you, uh, uh, Wilson. Our big problem here starts from the planning into implementation. Planning on paper looks, oh, okay. Coming to implementation and everybody starts operating on their own. The vice chancellors and chancellors are operating on their own. Health is operating on its own. The ministry is on its own. The university's fund is operating on its own. Nobody seems to know what they're supposed to be doing and they're not communicating to the one stakeholder, the student. If you implement a program and it's not working, then planning is poor. Mm -hmm. And it's poor planning, poor organizing. Something that is planned very well will give with precision the results that are intended. And we are, we are talking about the general decline of education across the regimes. Mm -hmm. uh, during Quebec administration, we saw the general stability of education, free education, enrollment going up, affordable secondary education, and expansion of universities and universities in every county. Yep. The presence. Yep. That was good progress. But uh, during Jubilee administration, we saw the general breakdown and deterioration of the education sector. Uh, we were number one in Africa in global competitiveness by 2013. Mm -hmm. In terms of quality and access, mm -hmm. that means we were the best in Africa. No country could actually compete with Kenya. <coughs> but now we have deteriorated. We are number seven. And if we don't watch out, we'll move down. And the entire sectors were affected. The the sector that is affected is the universities very badly. And you remember when Matiagi <laughs> came up from nowhere and stopped Module 2, the self-sponsored programs, yeah. which was the main artery of uh, university funding. Mm. And it was an opportunity to open up for citizens to access university education. And it was within the ministry's strategic plan that by 2018, university transition would be at 15%. Uh, but you see, because of personal wars uh, at the University of Nairobi, as we, where is this conflict of interest bill? Mm -hmm. <laughs> should also come in, it should be able to check some of these individuals. The module twos were destroyed, mm -hmm. and that went down uh, indeed with the, with, the, with the universities. And universities have remained <coughs> financially uh, immobilized up to today. They, they cannot mount quality teaching. They cannot mount quality research. They cannot even engage in community development. That is their mission. And when we were reviewing the, when we were developing the education charter, we mm. identified universities as the most underfunded. Even help, help, uh, help money was at 13 billion mm. for close to half a million students. Mm -hmm. And we said, that is, mm -hmm. this is not fair. Uh, right now, it has been adjusted to 30 billion. 30 billion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of, and we saw there was, there was every legitimate reason to enhance funding of universities and TVET. Yeah. 
but not without changing the funding model. Mm. That matter was discussed through the presidential working party. And it said the DUC had served to impoverished universities. Mm. And you know, some universities could not even pay salaries. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are aware of some of the universities yeah. that are uh, that are striking now because the universities are paying 65% of the uh, of the salaries. They are not remitting third party deduction. Mm. The, the, uh, I mean, something <coughs> that has never been heard of in this country. And these were policies that were done by sane mm -hmm. living minister, Kumani <laughs> Chogo. <laughs> sane, they're actually living. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> so, 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 I have to ask yes. you then, as you're saying. Now, <laughs> Sorry, with, with, with the new funding model, the I reason why ask, the new funding model. I have model, to ask, the problem that you've stated, when the presidential working party did its tour of the country and then did the university level, with the problems that you've stated that were very clear, mm. Is the funding model, the way in which it is currently constituted, an answer, a solution to those problems? L let me get to that. Yeah. You, you know, you know, you stopped me if I conclude that. Yeah, my, I want to do now, Because to I'm that. now yeah. coming to the funding model. Mm -hmm. It became inevitable that deploying resources to the universities should only be done under a new funding model. model. Mm -hmm. Because what existed before was general blanket uh, uh, capitation of students and you ask students to pay 16,000 each. Those who are able to pay and those who can't pay, mm. you make them to pay the same amount that was, th that was found to be untenable. Mm. And therefore, the presidential working party recommended development of a new funding model of which the vice chancellors and various teams sat and developed the current banding funding model is actually banding. It is still about DUC because mm. you must declare the cost of the various courses at the universities. Yeah. Now, where the problem came in is when the vice chancellors alone were allowed to be the only ones doing it. The principle of Article 10 of public participation uh, was, not, was not applied. And I think that is why now the minister has appointed two committees to relook it afresh and take the 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 process of banding the banding process the MTI process mm. through uh, a proper process of public participation that is what was missing and that's what I personally raised because when you talk about the MTI you are talking about the mean testing instrument yep. the mean testing instrument has been used by HELP yep. for the last 29 years yep. Yep. the HELP tool was applied last year with the current second years. Mm. That is how students yeah. were abandoned. Yes. And you can see that there is more noise this year than last, last, year. last year. Do you know what happened? Mm. This is what I established. Somebody mm. set aside the MTI of help and oh. brought in a consultant to generate a new MTI. Really? That is, yes. That's exactly what happened. And I made a Why? lot of noise about it. I can account. Somebody did it. Why? And uh, in that banding, mm. it placed 10,000 students in band one. In band one. Okay. And you know why? Uh, you know those who are <laughs> supposed to be in band one. Yeah, most yeah, most vulnerable. Yep. Now, but when, and, and this, I asked, I, I asked help mm. because a teacher called me and told me, no, I've been placed in, my child has been placed in band five. Mm -hmm. And this teacher is a teacher who has relied on me to support him, to pay fees, to do many things. And asked, how on earth can he be placed in band five? And band five is the least needy. Yes. And I, yeah. Yes. And I later on checked, even somebody who declared is a watchman is placed in band, band five. five. Somebody who declared is employed as yeah. a maid is placed band, in band five. band five. I was keen and I asked help and I had to ask help. What is happening? Mm -hmm. What the hell is this? Mm -hmm. And people at have told me, you see, we are no longer doing our work. Our job has been hijacked by somebody oh. else and uh, has brought in an MTI. The MTI that has been used is not the MTI that we applied last year. And I checked, and it was true. And uh, this conversation has been out there. We have seen in the town hall conversation, the students explained clearly to the president, mm -hmm. they explained to the peers, and, and actually, the peers bears responsibility. If you are a peers, don't take over 
yeah. responsibilities and functions of the saga under your supervision yeah. simply provide the leadership let them do their let work let them do their work and if help is allowed to midwife the process of MTI there will be no noise in fact the MTI we have, we have, to, we have the MTI MTI la the MTI la mm. the MTI because those who are in band five and when the, the MTI tool of help was applied at least those movement and drift of students towards band towards one band one. band one doubled from 10,000 to 21,000 mm. and I asked have you communicated to the students they said yes they will communicate to them you see we must be a country that faces the truth and that does the right things and this is where I question this tool and this process should not have been managed by the peers alone together with the vice chancellors because at the end of the day you are making courses in our public universities more expensive than in the private yeah. because take for example this particular case of a teacher is supposed to pay 97,000 shillings from the household annually uh, for a bachelor of science in education you will pay at Caprac University for the same course at 94. 94. So what is the essence of yeah. You see, there is something wrong about costing of courses in our public universities. And that this is where, where the Article 10 of the Constitution must come into play. Because this is a major policy shift of public participation that involves the students afresh in consulting about this model. Involve, involve the lecturers afresh. Because this is the best model. The model is good. The model is but good. it has been mishandled. We oh. want it to be handled very yeah, well. The question you and can Latif, ask Latif yeah. and Latif, uh, once it is done mm. and we have a model that is agreed, that is going to ban students appropriately, yeah. then domicile it in the school career desk. Yes. So that in every school you prepare, prepare students, students not only to choose careers, but also they should also to apply. understand the costing yep. and how to apply. Yes. That is but then the other question we should be asking the ministry is what is the difference when a child is coming to Nairobi University, going to KU, on the same, uh, same, course. same, same, course. Course. same course. But I'm, if I go to Maseno, I pay less. If I go to Moi, I pay, I don't know why. Why didn't they just unify? Because if I'm a parent then, am I allowed then to say, I have this and so my child will go to Maseno because it's the same career, I'm mm. doing law mm. and it's, it's more affordable here than here. How is costing done? Almost all these gaps, including costing, including harmonizing the cost of courses at private and public universities, mm. could have been corrected if it went through a thorough process of public participation. That will even include the legislators, a forum for the legislators as a law making it. So bring in all the stakeholders. Entity. Bring all the stakeholders mm. so that we finish this thing one for, and for all and we get a model that is going to work for many years. So that by the time you have the cohort under this model, yeah. completing the circle fourth year and fifth year, yeah. the university funding uh, financing will be stabilized. Let me and ask even the things will also be, be corrected. Let me ask you that question. Something needs to be done costing. beyond that before also. From costing, Wilson, hold on. Yes. To the best of your knowledge, how is this costing done? The, the, uh, I, 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 I don't have the <laughs> basics of uh, how the costing was done. Who does the but costing? But you see, it's simple. It was done by the vice chancellors. So and that should not have been done by the vice chancellors alone. That the lecturers who teach and they have their union. Why not involve them? There are students' unions. Yeah. And the u students' unions are represented in the Senate. Yeah. They actually sit in the Senate of all the universities. So then why not involve them? You see, so why didn't the Senate and, just do this costing? And Latif, we did not make the, we did not put clause 10, Article 10 in the Constitution of Public Participation for mayor window dressing so that we elect when to use it and when not to. The costing of courses in public universities should go through a proper stakeholder process of at least the university communities. Everybody. Dr. Malavo Ekesa is yes. uh, one And if that is done, if yeah. that is done, that is done, we'll have the costings done right. We'll have the banding done correctly. And, uh, and, and, and there will be stability. And let it be done by help. Yes. Help let it be done by help. Yeah. Don't I jump it. Don't Mara, take it in your We are not very sure whether it is in help. Oh, Mara, it is being run fun. by yeah. by the peers in her own, her own desk and bringing in her own consultancy firms 
to every program in the ministry to make money is is do we appoint people to government to go and develop flagship businesses to make money yes. and, and and make lives difficult for Kenya. Yes. It is immoral. That's this one is wrong. And we are telling the president, is, yes. if we have characters who are being appointed <laughs> yeah. to go and make money mm. in government offices, mm. then you have the wrong people. Uh, but, but for the last two program. years, I don't know who has advised the president that everything you have to change is the name. I don't know. Because that changing of the name also brings confusion. It's for the example. same way like NHIF and SHIF. So you even wonder. Just retain it as NHIF, but enhance it properly, make it efficient, but don't change the name. You change the name and people think it's a new animal that has arrived and, and in the many of the, and That is the same thing. And the same. And you know, it has it, to stop. generally education needs to be stabilized. If you bring in new programs that are complicated and difficult to understand and they've not gone through the requisite process of processing them, mm then you create problems. This one of the funding model is the best idea. And right, it was yes. mishandled. It is. But yes. it is never too late. It can be corrected. Yeah. So that then I would even suggest even students on grade A and A minus, those are the best of the country. And within that process, why can't they enjoy the full scholarship? And well, the, and, I will, I will and, then and, come and, even, and say, a and child even, and even be placed to... in so that is why th this student. banding this banding needs to be it has to incorporate a lot of things and yeah. majority of the students should be an, in a continuum of band one band two band three and probably there is need to consider the self-sponsored uh students. program actually to yeah. be brought yeah. back yeah. because if yeah. we have seven hundred thousand over candidature and at least four to five hundred are potential to undertake university education yeah. why can't you have the government sponsored load placed across the bands maybe up to band three and then those band four and five can be committed Spell, to ssp the ssp will come with the money yeah. and they'll sponsor these others and, and that's why i say elegy you know let's accept education is about rewarding those who have excelled, grade A's and the best, no, I agree. should even be fully sponsored by government and guaranteed employment at the end of graduating without wasting time so that we have the best of the best to, uh, joining the civil service and joining government but the problem and helping is us that to get rid of corruption. The but problem see, is that we corrupted, it. Have, we corrupted it, sorry to say, when we started a private school for primary. So I go there. And I know very well. And you look I for a shortcut to a national school and I'll be and in a get national an school and I'll get an A. And disadvantage which is unfair also. And, uh, and uh, within the, the presidential working party has also recommended the abolishing of classification of schools. Yes. So we don't need to have I a national school subcontract. Because because all schools I are equal. At, uh, in the Russia, I yes. saw there were billboards. Mm -hmm. uh, three eight uh, min schools. Do mm -hmm. you what? It was yes, just, and when I you go to such schools, the gate one. is so so fantastic. It's elaborate, but yeah. uh, very elaborate. So, but when you get inside, <laughs> very funny substandard structures. I think we've got to walk as a country. I'm walk hoping the CBC talk. is going to finish. Walk that. the talk. That we've got to walk the talk. Walk the school. talk, and ensure that education is properly managed. It is reconfigured properly uh, through proper planning organizing and execution of programs uh, guided by quality research, not political impulse, and not cartel's interest, and to ensure that there is equitable, inclusive delivery of quality education, and I dare say quality public education. Because where a government provides quality public education, we will not need private investors and private schools and private programs. But my it. prayer also if, that if you look at the example of Malaysia, for example, education is a service, is a high quality service, and uh, it's is a major service industry that's attracting students from from outside mm. and is a main foreign uh, income, income earner for, for for Malaysia yeah. because they've made it the best for their citizens through public and made it the best for even uh, outsiders. Private to come for education. Mm -hmm. Kenya has the best opportunity to mount quality, equitable education through public and make Kenya a destination for education service 
uh, by other countries. Well said. Well said. For me, I think mm. that the best is we have an opportunity to ensure as we roll out year nine next year that the ministry will now ensure that everything is in time. Parents are able to understand how kids are joining year nine. We shall have the classrooms for year nine. And even as they go for their exams this year, that we have laboratories and if we don't have, we have mobile labs for children to ensure they just, they are accessed well so that we don't go to year nine and start again the same challenge in year 10 where we'll be fighting again for the best schools. But Moshima, My child will, will go to the Moshima, best. I hate to be the one who casts a shadow of doom. I it will but be what are we looking at right now? Unless the current issues, which are, uh, which are digging this situation deeper and deeper are addressed and dealt with, what you're talking about will be the case next year. And I'm hoping we shall have NEMIS. Every you know, child. the one thing that's coming out clearly from this conversation today, the last two hours, is the clear and very, very urgent need for citizen activism on education. The people of Kenya need to bring all their attention back to education, to education. and what's happening in our education sector. Yeah. Our children are going to school and they're coming back home and we're not sure of the quality that they're receiving. We have grade sevens who don't have enough teachers. Mm -hmm. They're going into eight. Yeah. There are eights they, they who don't have, have enough the teachers. Teacher. They have the wrong teachers. The wrong teacher. And we are saying that we are taking them to school. We have schools that are secondary that are not getting sufficient funding. We have children that are in university that are not even getting the proper funding. And yet we have a ministry of education that takes the lion's share of our budget every year. Parliament should be doing this. Parliament will do it if the people of Kenya make parliament to do its work. Parliament, for example, has been sitting well, the presidential working party's implementation metrics had six months to one year items. Parliament is not asking questions on whether those things have been done and why they haven't been done. Has it been implemented? Why is that not being implemented? Why is the law, basic education law, that establishes a council to ensure quality uh, of standards in our schools not in place? Parliament is in place. It's not doing that. So the people of Kenya, we must make parliament do its work. That's the thing. I agree. I agree. And all the stakeholders in the education sector, Wilson Sosion included, because you know what's been happening and what's supposed to be happening. Raise your voice. Come and remind people. And the presidential that. working party, the report is out. It says, by now, we should have stopped categorization of schools. Has it been implemented? Has that been implemented? By no. now, we should be having quality, comprehensive school. Yep. From grade one to nine. nine. To nine. Has, Has it been, been implemented? Why not? Even just it to plan only look whether we are having the grade uh, nines ready. The, the, the yeah. graduate teachers who are deployed to teach grade seven, eight, and nine, and actually they are trained to teach senior secondary, yeah. did we deploy the correct teachers? And no, we did politics with it and did, decided mm, some areas will bring more Those than are the questions. Thank you very much, Sosion and Beatrice, for joining us. Wilson Sosion, former NAT Secretary General, former Member of Parliament, and Beatrice Elachi, current Member of Parliament for the Great North Constituency. Our conversations continue in the next hour. We have Senator Okiom Tata, 9 a.m. Spice up your life. Starting 17th September. The traditional 32 group.